This is the Check It Out podcast from the Moraine Valley Library. I'm Troy. I'm Tish. And we are continuing our conversation today about the one book text on Hamilton the Musical. And we are here to welcome faculty member from history, Jim McIntyre. Hi, Jim. Hi, everyone. I think we wanted to just get a little of the history, historical foundation for the musical kind of under our feet a little bit. So could you start us off and tell us about Alexander Hamilton's significance and how historians think about Hamilton? Sure. Um, Alexander Hamilton's, you know, biography is pretty well covered, actually, in the musical. Um, He's an immigrant from the Caribbean of European descent. He gets to New York, uh, is attending college there when the War of Independence breaks out. He leaves college to join the Continental Army and and very quickly is noticed by the leadership, specifically George Washington, becomes a member of Washington's staff, they, as they would call it, his military family. The reason I mention that, it's a very tight-knit group of people that spend a great deal of time together. And what that means is after the war, you know, he's, he's very close to Washington. Through him, he meets people like John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and has connections to all of these people. He's also connected with the ruling elites in, in New York. Um, he becomes a stalwart of the Federalists, who are the group that really push for a constitution in 1787, a stronger national government. He becomes involved with Washington's first administration as part of that national government, uh, is Secretary of the Treasury, and really pushes forward an agenda. And, and this is probably where historians most remember him. Hamilton's agenda is you know, that we are going to be a nation of producers. We must industrialize, uh, which is fundamentally different from that of Thomas Jefferson. And there's a, these two had known each other. They respected one another, but there are epic clashes between them. Um, and and, and that, that clash is part of the founding of the first political parties. Too. Yes, yes. Um, Sorry to interrupt. So, no, no, and, and ab- you're absolutely correct. Hamilton, um, again, becomes a leader of the Federalists. Jefferson, initially they're dubbed the Anti-Federalists. It's never good to define yourself in opposition, so they, they change their name to Democratic Republicans to stress sort of the little guy's views. Um, and they do eventually... Uh, have a Jefferson and Hamilton do eventually kind of have a make up. They they uh, in fact Hamilton is is significant even in Jefferson becoming third president. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, J- Hamilton is most remembered by historians for for sort of pushing this industrialized and then and strong central government are two themes. And I think, you know, the musical really focuses on the relationship that Hamilton has with Aaron Burr. Can you yes. talk about that a little bit? Because it is, I mean, it's a famous duel. We know that it happened. But I think outside of the musical, I wasn't sure the foundations of that, how that came about, that dueling was really a thing that happened for real. So, um, Dueling was a thing. It was a big <laughs> thing. Um, and, and there's actually, uh, there's, there's a whole code duello which is designed, interestingly, to prevent the actual duel from happening in the end. Uh, For Hamilton and Burr, it actually goes back to 1776. Captain Captain Hamilton swore he saw, you know, Major Burr running from the British at the Battle of Long Island, actually had him brought up on charges of cowardice. Burr is cleared. Now, both of these guys were ascending... Uh, political wannabes in New York at the time. As time passes, they become involved with separate factions. So what what eventually leads to the duel is is this sort of political infighting over um, the governorship of New York. And this is after the revolution, after the Constitution is in. Um, and you know, Burr challenges Hamilton. Um, there is some discussion, too, what happens to Burr afterwards, uh, he's actually charged with murder. Now, dueling is illegal, and there's also a lot of discussion about did Hamilton actually do what's called throwing away his shot, and that comes up in the musical, too. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the line, I'm not going to throw away my shot. I'm not. And the idea was if you're fighting with pistols, you know, you ha- as we see in the movies, you have your seconds and they're also witnesses, and that's an important part. Like, this is going to be a criminal investigation at <laughs> some point. So you want people who can say, 
hey, the, you know, the, the code was observed or what have you. Um, and so there was a lot of supposition that Hamilton might have, you know, pointed his pistol off to the side and say, I throw away my shot. That way, if Burr still shoots, he's, com he's shooting an unarmed man, which is murder. And Burr is eventually charged, and and, and, we're, and there's still a debate if he actually threw away his shot. Or there whatever. is a big debate over whether or not he threw away his shot. And some of the Burr-Hamilton conflict does revolve, you mentioned the New York governorship, but also mm -hmm. with Jefferson's election, right? Yeah, there's uh, Jefferson's election because Hamilton, you know, Burr was one of the contenders as well for the presidency. Um, it's It's very, very different from the way we elect a president today. The one with the most votes, initially the one with the most votes was president. The runner-up was vice president. That gave you John Adams, the Federalist, as president, and Thomas Jefferson, the Anti-Federalist, as vice president. Quick footnote, they made a constitutional amendment to prevent that from ever happening again. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, though, in the, in the election of 1800, Hamilton, it was judged to be too, the election itself was judged to be too close to, to call, so it went to Congress. Hamilton was a big player in Congress. Burr was, was a significant player as well. Hamilton got the Federalists to support Jefferson over his rival, Burr. Um, so Burr lost and became vice president. Burr lost and became vice president to Jefferson. Uh, but again, that's that's part of it it really the the actual insult that leads to the duel comes up in the in the New York governor's race gotcha so but there is a long history of sort of and and to be quite frank a lot of the other things on Hamilton he's an instigator he presses people's buttons he fights a number of duels i mean all told he fights about 6 duels and there are about 11 challenges out there i just read an article about this he actually fought 10 duels in his life it's not clear how many he actually fought, like how many actually right. came to the guns. They were going through, and what was the name of the process you mentioned? The Code Duella. Yes, yeah, so they're going through the code, and it would stop at a certain point. Yeah. But he was he was not afraid oh, to no. step up mm -hmm. and protect his honor. And that's no. like that tragic hero. I think that's also because this story has been in literature, like Gore Vidal's book. Like there's, mm -hmm. this is, like you said, the historians may remember Hamilton for one thing, but I think the popular history yeah. remembers him for this duel also. I mean, that's and, and the Hamilton-Burr duel, quite frankly, is, is almost the it, – it's not the, the best one for that heroic view. Like, there's, there's a challenge that goes out earlier. Uh, there's something called the Conway Cabal, which a lot of people argue about did it happen. It was a, a supposed attempt to unseat Washington as commander of the army during the Revolution. And this, you know, kind of comes to the fore. And uh, a, a letter, actually, Hamilton was out drinking with the aide to this other general, Gates, who was the guy who wanted Washington's job. And this aide dropped a letter, and Hamilton kind of, hey, huh, and reads this and, and brings the, you know, brings the information to Washington. In the process, as, as this, you know, explodes and the fallout starts to hit, um, Hamilton actually challenged Gates to a duel. And, you know, one of the outs was if you had a higher social position, you could literally say, you are beneath my contempt, and that's where it stopped. Like, Gates was like, look, I'm not going to step down and fight a duel with you. Wow. But Hamilton, in that case, was kind of going out for the boss. You know, he's like, <laughs> he's going out to, because Washington, again, is trying to preserve a revered position. If he, he's not going to go roll around in the mud with someone. So his aide will go out and say, hey, let's step outside. So the, I think the common book on the, – the most popular book now on the actual history is Ron Chernow's book yes. on Hamilton. Could, and that's, that's what the musical is based on. Could you talk a little bit about um, the perspectives on that book from, the, from historians and you know, maybe what it gets right, what it gets wrong from your perspective? Okay. Well, history, it is a controversial book. Um, and, and I would say that one of the, the reasons it is controversial is, is what I like to refer to as the, the trap or the challenge of the biographer, which is it's very easy to fall in love with the subject. You know, the, um, I've been reading through the book, again, just because of the one, book or one text, one college, and part of the problem is that Cherno really celebrates Hamilton. He kind of attributes... Some, some things to Hamilton that, well, 
okay, but he makes a lot of them. To give specific examples, um, he, there's an essay Hamilton writes while he's in college in New York where he's talking about how, you know, the colonies could defeat the British if this comes to war. And Chernow kind of says, look, Hamilton came up with the plan that could win the war with Britain. And he gets a lot of things right, but the the problem with that uh, perspective is what Hamilton does is what they call today a net assessment. You look at two sides in a conflict and you go, these are their strengths, these are their weaknesses, this is how we, you know, this is how my side could best use our strengths against their weaknesses. It's it's not all that amazing that mm -hmm. someone who's in the know and sees what's going on around them and is quite intelligent, you know, it's something that anyone like Ben Franklin or Thomas Jefferson could have done as well. So, but Chernow kind of singles him out because he's his subject. Um, also, the idea that while he is on Washington's staff, Hamilton does eventually become very trusted. Chernow kind of portrays this as happening overnight. A lot of other historians have kind of said Hamilton, who is about 22 at the time, oversteps his bounds, you know, on the number of occasions. He's, he's signing letters and sending them out as if they're Washington's and they're, they're his, and he really hasn't consulted his <laughs> boss too much, which is something that you could see with someone who's, you know, just been rapidly promoted and, and is kind of exuberant about it. And, oh, oh, I shouldn't have sent that letter right. out, right? Um, I think this brings up um, a great point, just that, you know, Chernow is writing and in love with his subject and so really celebrating Hamilton and maybe yes. not taking a critical view, which I think, you know, something that you've talked about before is um, that historians oftentimes do tell, you know, the stories of historical figures from different perspectives. Um, popular history also might take a different perspective. So can you talk about that a little bit, like how there's not just one story of a historical figure and how maybe the musical kind of steps in as well to offer a different voice? Certainly. I mean, you know, the, the, the usual split is professional historian versus pop or professional history versus popular history, academic history versus popular history. And popular history can be great. I mean, it it keeps me in business in the sense that it, <laughs> it gets an audience, you know, right. it gets people interested and hopefully they'll take a class or, or they'll do some more digging and look at some of the more, you know, critical views. Um, but Popular historians write for the for the masses, so they want to get a story out there that is a great story, and and draw draw the audience in that way. Well, in doing that, they may simplify some things. They may not. Uh, they may cover up some controversies. Some are more balanced than others. By the same token, I think professional academic historians can be far too critical of things. They can they can, you know, point out all the flaws and, and just, you know, detract to the point where it's, you, you're kind of asking yourself, okay, and you wrote about this topic because. <laughs> um, so there, there is need for a happy medium, but there, and there are different perspectives. I mean, and the play gets into this as well. Um, it's fairly celebratory of Hamilton and also the revolutionary generation. And I think part that can be lost in that is, um these were these were men and women they had they were human beings they had human failings uh you know hamilton is remembered at the broad level as first treasury secretary you know for this view of industry in the united states but he's also remembered by historians for having the first national level sex scandal you know, right. So, so right. there's that part too. But again, you know, as a as a professional historian, I also think that there's there's a valuable lesson in how they handled this. You know, Washington kind of going, look, go to the press and tell them the whole truth. You know, come clean, mm -hmm. take be accountable, and let the public decide. And the, and the public, when informed, decided in favor of Hamilton and Washington. Said, okay, these guys are at least telling us the truth. Can we talk just briefly yeah. to touch on the musical and how it popularizes the history and what it does for, as a historian, what it does um, from your perspective? Um, I, there's two sides to that, I think, the, the second question. Um, what the musical does, I think, is, is really reach out 
you know, using hip hop, using a, a multiracial, multicultural cast, and brings Hamilton and his times to the public today it, through a lens that we can watch, and they're not statues. You know, it makes them real people. And the great part about that, from my perspective, is it's going to generate interest. Now, a lot of colleagues have, have raised criticisms that that's not 100% accurate. It's not, it's not telling the whole story. Uh, the, the counter to that is, well, granted, it's not telling the whole The musical doesn't tell the whole story. It's telling a popular story. It's meant to be entertainment. This is not a documentary. This is not a, a true story. And, and no one is saying that this is the true biography of Alexander Hamilton. It's a musical. What hopefully it will do, though, is get people to explore and look into that true story further. And so I think that's the, the other part where it's a real, you know, um, boon to people in my line of work, where it's going to get people interested in hopefully taking classes or picking up books and articles. And I think we're hoping with our one book this year that it does just that and that we can dive into this text. I wanted to give a little plug on September 7th at noon, Jim will be joined by two of his uh, colleagues in the history department, Mary Fifflees and Josh Fulton, to, to do a panel discussion on the importance of Hamilton examining history and it will be a much deeper dive into Alexander Hamilton and his significance. And knowing you and your colleagues, I think it will be a lot of fun. So I hope people come to that and join in these conversations. So with that, I want to say thanks for talking Thank to you. us. And thanks, thanks, thanks to uh, everyone for listening. Thank you.